uh, and one more thing that I um, want to talk about because uh, this 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 particular topic is kind of very close to my heart, and uh, you know uh, this topic is also kind of well known outside the string theory community as well because uh, this uh, topic is actually used for some of some of the criticisms on string theory as well. Uh, but it, a lot of people don't know that this uh, problem can be. Uh, you know, solved in string field theory. And that's the problem of proving the background independence, right? So uh, in string field theory, there are, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the, in string field theory, there are, uh, you know, some proofs that do prove the background independence for a large class of, uh, you know, theories, or, or sorry, a large class of backgrounds, actually. Um, and the thing is that, uh, first of all, do, uh, uh, why do you think that this particular fact about string, string field theory is not uh, you know, very well known in the community. And secondly, uh, you know, I think this should be, this should have been the first question that I would have asked. The question is that how do you even define background independence? Because I've seen different definitions of this word. Uh, yes. So, so, so for your question, it's, um, I, I would say overall people in our community are very allergic to string theory. And most people don't want to hear anything about it. And they don't know why it is useful. Um, I think it's even like a widespread opinion. I mean, until recently, at least, that uh, you cannot do anything that you can do, cannot do with watches. So, like, string theory is just useless. Uh, so, this I don't think it's true. And it's because people like uh, are, are not really aware of the literature, which is also not written in a very accessible way if you don't know string theory already. But now the point that it is a, there were no good reviews or lecture notes or anything to learn string theory. So it's kind of, you know, like chicken and eggs. You cannot learn string theory easily, so you cannot read the literature, so you don't really know what is there. And I think it's one of the main problems why people don't pay so much attention to it. And in fact, our background independence or other results like unitarity and so on. Um, so now the, sorry, your second question was, uh, well, how do you define background independence? How because define, um, yes. I have seen different definitions of this word. So, so to me, background independence is uh, whenever you can write uh, the action of a theory or the path integral without making reference to any fixed background. So, one example of this is that if you take normal particle physics and you write the Lagrangian of the standard model, you need to use the Minkowski metric eta. So, because you have this eta, which is a fixed structure um, and by structure I mean some fixed field, I would say it's background dependent. Um, you could imagine also like some condensed matter system where you have some electron and you want to put some external electric field. Uh, the field could be dynamical, but to, to write the theory, you need to start with some fixed field. So it's background dependent uh, in terms of this. Um, so now, for example, in string theory, when you do the watch it formalism and you fix the CFT uh, in it more in general or background, so when you say, okay, I have this KBO or this uh, this flux and so on, it's all fields which are part of the data which you fix, and then you will look at small fluctuation over that background. This is background dependent. Um, now to give a so, so okay overall, as you see, I think it's easier to kind of give example of what is background dependent and what is not. Uh, one example which of background in the man is general relativity, because if you look at the action, um, and by this I mean the Einstein-Hilbert action, so if you look at the action, so integral of R, yeah, you don't need to define anything in advance. You just write it, and the, the, the possible background will be given by the solution to the Einstein equation. But until you go for the solution, you don't need to know any of them. Like you don't need to know Minkowski exists to write the einstein hilbert action. For the standard model, for example, you need to know Minkowski in advance. So, so it's this difference right. that what do you, do you need to know the, back, the solution for your field in advance or not? Um, it's even more than solution because you, you can, you, you could also in present use a North shape background, so which is not a solution, but so you need to write something for, for einstein hilbert you don't need anything. But but someone may argue that uh, even in general relativity, you are at least the, the thing is that uh, for most approaches to quantum gravity, people expect that 
we will discover that space time is not fundamental and they say that if your theory is assuming that space time is there then your theory is not background dependent so what do you say on that i mean general relativity does not have this feature it assumes the existence of space time at least um yeah is this i think you know it's philosophy and i think it's mm -hmm. very important to think about cardinal question like this but I, I would say for now we're not too little to to get to take a strong stance i mean we can take a strong stance personally mm -hmm. uh as one people and decide to work on one theory or another because it has this feature or not um but as of now i don't think we we know enough for sure to 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 reject a theory because of this so so saying that you know we assume but space time uh to me it's not sufficient uh, and yeah i think it would be nice to be to really see space time to emerge and so on but then it would emerge from something else which we have no idea now um and i i think it's uh, I, I mean i quite agree also with some people that it's one of the points i'm uncomfortable with string theory and uh and uh like theory is that you you start with the dynamic of the strings you see space time equation of motions but you still have the strings which need to to be there in some sense. So I I would really prefer some, you know, some action from which you see that excited state or space time containing strings. But uh, now right. we don't have this. Well, but but, but there are some uh, arguments in the first volume of Polchinski that you can write down, uh, you know, the different background metrics as coherent states of strings, right? So in that particular sense, uh, can't you say that, okay, space-time is not fundamental in string theory, it's a coherent state of strings? Yeah, I mean, I, I think in fact, you could also say something like this with gravity. Like I know some people work with the idea that you can write gravitational background as coherent states. And, mm -hmm. and like it was very popular with the center, for example, because you know, like the center has some problem at the quantum mechanical level. Uh, I, I'm still uncomfortable with the idea that you 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 start with the coherent states, but of strings. But you start so you start with a theory where you say strings exist in some space time because it's how we describe the dynamics now in the watch sheet or even string field theory. But then you say okay, this space time is a coherent state of that thing we started with, which live in space time. So it's kind of a bit circular, uh, which I'm not so happy with. But I don't have any good explanation. So. Maybe it's what happened at the end, but I don't know if it's three strings that will, will you know, form the current state exactly. I'm see. not sure, but. So, uh, so to sum, sum it up, when we say that we can prove the background independence in string theory, it means, you know, the, that the definition of the word background independent is what, what you said in the start, right? That you don't have a metric in the start. Of the theory. So almost so you, we need to distinguish two types of background independence. So the first is mm -hmm. a one we call the explicit, like in general relativity, where we just don't need to specify anything from scratch. And I think it's very ideal, and many people who are against things here would say that it's what we need. Uh, but here again, it's an assumption. Like okay, I also think it's more beautiful if you can do it, but we don't have any big principle telling you that it must be like this. The second solution is if um, you have uh, like implicit background in the so you 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 need to write to use a background to start writing things, but it's not important. And and so this how you can put it is that so if you change your background in your action, so you do a field redefinition. Uh, sorry, if you change the background, you can show that it's a field redefinition. Uh, one example of this in uh, normal physics is uh, if you take general reality, which you expand on some metric. So, you know, you do G hat plus H and H is small. Uh, you get a theory which is explicitly background dependent. Sorry, we, which looks like it depends on, on the background, but you can show that it's just uh, independence is implicit because you, you know you can always go back to Einstein and do another expansion. Um, it happens that string theory, theory is this type of theory. And, and the main, mot main reason is because the string uh, states of fluctuation above the background. So now the string is not like, uh, let's say, a full part, of, uh, like it's not the graviton, it's a fluctuation of the graviton, if you look at the spin to fluctuation. So because this, everything you do with string theory, we give you fluctuation above the background because we start with the background always. So, so we will get a theory which looks like 
uh, general relativity expanded on some background. So the only chance you have to show backgrounded independence is indeed to show that if you change the background, it's a field redefinition. And it's what uh, Ashoksen and Barton Fibar could prove uh, first for the bosonic string and then the super string. So right. it's a more limited um, background independence, uh, but it's still there. I see. And uh, uh, so uh, for, for the people in the audience who don't know, the, uh, there are some uh, different sectors in string theory which are known as the NS NS sector and NSR sector, R NS sector and RR sector. So do we have uh, a proof of the background independence in all of these sectors or are some of the sectors not done yet? So so even Montenegro, you could even say like we have open and closed string and mm -hmm. we have also so bosonic string and super string. Um, so for the open bosonic string, so the which was built from Britain, so here the uh, background independence is uh, uh, quite easy to show. And in fact, because of all this work on classical solutions, so, so for the theory, you can compute analytic solutions uh, so that um, even non-perturbatively, so you don't need to take the string coupling to be small. Uh, so, so you can compute the solution. You can do a sh uh, shift the background from, for example, Minkowski to one of the solutions. And you can show exactly independence. So, so as we see, this is the strongest independence which was shown in string theory because you can just shift by a finite background and it's it works. Um, then for the closed bosonic string, it was done in uh, ninety six. Uh, so, so here uh, you need to take a small deformation. So the, the uh, uh, people could show that you can add many small deformation to get a large deformation, but but still like the step is a small deformation, so it's more constrained compared to open bosonic string. Um, now, if you look at the theory of open and closed bosonic string, so where you mix both, um, I don't think there is a complete paper uh, proving the invariance with all the steps and so on, but there is some like indication it should be there in a paper from Barton Sviba. So, so this, sh I, I assume, is also fine. Now, if you move to the super thing, so first, it doesn't really matter if you're in the NS or Ramond or a mixture of them. Uh, in general, if you can do for one, you can do for the other. Um, so for the open super string, I don't think uh, people will study it, but uh, yeah, this I'm not aware about paper we're discussing it, uh, but I assume it will not be too hard because, so what's that yeah. is you know, when you mix gravity and the brain. So if you just have one, it's kind of fine. If you mix both, it's a bit harder. Um, then also what, what has been, so the, then what was proven uh, in 2017 by Ashoksen was, uh, background in advance for the closed super string theory. And uh, and now that's all. So I know some people, and for example, myself, are interested in doing the full like, open closed super string field theory, uh, but it has not been done yet. Uh, but a priori, just technical details. Like there, is, there is no mm -hmm. big hurdle to, to do it. I and uh, there is a small also addition to background independence, which I think is important, is that so you often feel that, so you have this string coping constant. In fact, it's not the fundamental parameter of string theory, which I think is important to highlight because you know, one thing which is nice with string theory is that you not have independent parameter. Like alpha, alpha prime is just a conversion uh, factor. Then you have GS, the string coping, but the string coping, in fact, it corresponds to the background. Uh, so the expectation value of what is called the ghostly latent state which is a state which is not often discussed in, in books and papers. So I think it's a, uh, it, it's a very peculiar state. Uh, and, and, and so the, this is not so well known, but, but this string coupling constant is just the expectation value of that. And background independence should also require that if you change the string coupling constant, you should get, uh, be able to compensate this by a field redefinition. And because the background in string theory is redefined by the value of the uh, string coupling, and the other fields. And importantly, it was proven uh, by Barton Schreber uh, for the, uh, and Bergman and other collaborators for the boson X ring that indeed it's what happens. So if you, you can, like, the string coupling is really just part of the background definition. 
So this has not been proved also already for the super string. Um, so I was working on this at some point and uh, put this on the break. But but again, it, it should just be a matter of uh, you know working out the details to to show it. And and you really need both things to to show the full background in the band of string theory. And this you know sh should happen. So you you're saying that uh, you know and these remaining things don't have a big hurdle to be done. So they are just technical details to be filled in. Yes. I, for the ghost I don't sh sure it, like I really don't think it's uh, it's difficult. Um, like there's some small subtleties. Uh, but, so like for carrot for people who know a bit like uh, the super thing and super thing theory. So the main point with super thing theory is that you have the Ramon sector, and to be able to write an action for this, so the Ramon sector has kind of a safe zero constraint like type two basic gravity. So it's hard to write an action for that. And if you write an action for that. Um, then you have some complication which make it harder to do the same proof as you had for the bosonic thing. So you need to be a bit more innovative, but like this has been understood. So so now it's just working out the additional details you get. Um, so yes, and for the open cause uh, super thing, uh, yeah, I don't I don't think there is a, any big principle which would prevent you to prove it, but uh, it's not clear to me how to proceed uh, either. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And the YouTube algorithm thinks that you will also like this video.